All right, this video is going to talk about the trigonometric function values for um, some angles that occur, occur quite frequently, mainly the 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degree angles. All right, so suppose we have an equilateral triangle. Everybody know what an equilateral triangle is? All right, so all three sides are the same length, so we'll call them X. And all three angles are the same, right? So this would be, they're all 60 degrees. Right? That's an equilateral triangle. Now, what if we take this triangle and bisect one of these angles and cut it in half? Everybody follow me? Okay, so if we do that, then we're left with this. And by bisecting this angle right here, cutting it down like there, we're making what type of a triangle? We're making a right triangle. Where this angle is 60 degrees, right because that's just the same angle here but since we cut this angle up here in half then this angle right here is what 30 degrees okay now the the hypotenuse is this length right here so it's still x we've cut this in half so then this length down here is one half of x and since it's a right triangle we could figure out what this height is by the Pythagorean theorem, so go off and do that, and you'll end up with the square root of 3 over 2 times x. Now, let's find the sine of 30 degrees. All right, so here's 30 degrees. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So since up here is 30 degrees, the side opposite 30 degrees is down here at this 1 half x. All right. So 1 half x divided by the hypotenuse, which is just x, and that just goes to 1 half. So the sine of 30 degrees is always 1 half. What about the cosine of 30 degrees? All right. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So since this is the 30 degree angle, the side adjacent would be this side right here. So the square root of 3 over 2 times x, and all that's over the hypotenuse, which is x, and all of that just goes to the square root of 3 over 2. So the cosine of 30 degrees is always the square root of 3 over 2. You follow me? Okay, so now what about, say, the cosine of 60 degrees. All right? So now we're looking at this one 60 degrees. All right? Well, the cosine is adjacent, All right? So 1 half x over the hypotenuse, which is x, and that goes down to 1 half. Hmm. So the sine of 30 degrees and the cosine of 60 degrees gave us the same value. Can I see that? All right, let's do one more. Let's do the sine of 60 degrees. All right, so again, here's 60 degrees, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, so the side opposite the 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2 times x, and the hypotenuse is still just x. So we have the square root of 3 over 2, all that times x, divided by x, which just gives us the square root of 3 over 2. So the cosine of 30 degrees is the same thing as the sine of 60 degrees. Everybody see that? All right, so now um, this is in degrees. What about radians? Well, 30 degrees is equal to pi over 6 radians, and 60 degrees is equal to pi over 3 radians. So therefore, the sine of pi over 6 is also one half, because pi over six is the same as thirty degrees. And the cosine of pi over six is the square root of three over two. And the sine of pi over three is the square root of three over two. And the cosine of pi over three is one half. Alright, so now we're gonna have an isosceles triangle. Okay, right triangle is isosceles, which means this leg and this leg are the same length which then, by the Pythagorean theorem, for the hypotenuse. Okay. Now, 
since this is 90 degrees, this is the right triangle, these two angles here have to be the same because we're not doing an isosceles triangle, and they are both 45 degrees. Everybody with me? Okay, they're both 45 degrees. So, the sine of 45 degrees, okay, we'll do this one down here. So the sine of 45 degrees, so the sine is um, opposite over hypotenuse, so x over x radical 2, which goes to 1 over the square root of 2, and when you rationalize that denominator, you get square root of 2 over 2. This is going to be how we're going to remember it. Sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Now what about the cosine of 45 degrees? Right, so the cosine, here's 45 degrees, so the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so you get x over x radical 2 again, which goes to 1 over the square root of 2, so you get the same value. Sine of 45 degrees and the cosine of 45 degrees are both the square root of 2 over 2. Real quick, what do you think the tangent of 45 degrees is? Right, well, it's opposite over adjacent. So it's 1. So the tangent of 45 degrees is always 1. The sine and cosine of 45 degrees are both always the square root of 2 over 2. Now that's in degrees. So what about radians? Well, 45 degrees equals how many radians? Well, pi over 4 radians. All right. So therefore, the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of pi over 4 is also the square root of 2 over 2. Right? Remember, we have to be fluent with both degrees and radians. Right? So the sine of pi over 4 is the same thing as the sine of 45 degrees. They both give the square root of 2 over 2. Right? So you need to be very familiar with the sine cosine of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. Um, and in radians, that would be the sine and cosine of pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, and pi over 3 radians. Now notice that 30 degrees and 60 degrees are complementary angles. They add up to 90 degrees, right? Well, that means pi over 6 and pi over 3 are also complementary angles they add up to pi over 2 radians. Remember, pi over 2 um, is the same, pi over 2 radians is the same thing as 90 degrees. Right? So, um, the idea here that the sine of pi over 6 and the cosine of its complement, pi over 3, give you the same value, that, uh, that, that actually has an idea called co-functions. So we've got what's called co-function identities. If theta is in degrees, then the sine of theta is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta, right? And the cosine of theta is equal to the sine of 90 degrees minus theta. These have to be equal. Remember, if, if theta was 30 degrees, then sine of 30 degrees was the same thing as the cosine of 90 minus 30 would be 60. So sine of 30 degrees was the same thing as the cosine of 60 degrees. Okay? If theta is in radians, then what do we have? Then the sine of theta equals the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta, and the cosine of theta is equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus theta. All right, so that's just, that is a property that happens. They're, they're, uh, so we're just formalizing up what the identity is. They're called co-functions, co-function identities, right? But the main part of, um, of this discussion is to know uh, the sine and cosine of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, and in radians, the sine and cosine of pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, and pi over 3 radians. Right? That's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.